Welcome back, everybody. It's your time that up on the Edup Experience Podcast, where we make education your business. And what an honor, and I mean honor, to be here in beautiful Raleigh, North Carolina, at the Element 451, wait for it, Engage Summit here uh, at the Market Hall, which uh, is a beautiful venue. Uh, we are really, really excited to be here and be podcasting live. Uh, it's uh, 90 degrees, humidity is high, and uh, I am ready. Um, let me tell you how ready I am. So I came in this morning uh, ready to be here at Ele Element 451 Engage Summit. Uh, talked to artists, of course, the CEO of Element 451 said hi, came upstairs uh, while I was at the hotel. I went to Starbucks. I got a coffee, extra hot. So we're like, I don't know what, three quarter, uh, three ten, not very far. So I walk all the way over here with my extra hot latte. Didn't even take one sip, not even one sip because I wanted to sit down and enjoy it. So I get here and I speak to the team and, I, and they say, where do you want to set up? And I said, I'm low maintenance. You can put me wherever you want. And right after I said I'm low maintenance, I dropped the coffee everywhere. Nailed it. Uh, so all over the floor, uh, my low maintenance-ness obviously was not true. I turned out to be very high maintenance. They had to bring over an entire team of people to clean up my mess. Uh, and that is the way I started off the conference. So it can only go up from here. Uh, here and I've got an incredible amazing guest with me who's going to talk all about what's happening at element 451 and here he is ladies and gentlemen he is eric range and he is product for element 451 eric what's going on hey thanks so much uh excited to be here with our engage conference my first engage my first uh day of work for the second time is this work uh, really was, was no it's not it was <laughs> last year's engage conference so coming up engage. on my one year uh anniversary back at element and couldn't be more proud of all the things we're doing uh to help our higher education partners you know Ele element's got a really good story because you guys you know i met artists way back a couple of years ago and he came on the podcast i think he might have been in the first 100 guests we had so two three years ago budding startup you know, bringing CRM technology into higher ed in a way that, that frankly, other CRM companies weren't able to do at the time. Now, two, three years later, you've had some series and some, some rounds and funding and, and growth. Uh, and I'm looking at this user community going, wow, you've got a lot of energized users. What is going on with the product, Eric? Tell us about the product and its evolution. You know, it's really incredible. Of course, we started with uh, focus on kind of that top of funnel marketing focus. And now we're really an engagement platform for the whole student journey. And that's really our theme today um, is unifying that student journey uh, and wanting to really not only deal with the admissions and recruitment aspects of things, but how do we get students through successfully to completing whatever that educational goal, whether that's graduate school, uh, a bachelor's degree, or just a certificate, right? These are all things we're seeing in higher education and we need to be able to help all of those students. Say what you said again. You, did you say unifying the student experience? Unifying the student experience. What does that mean exactly So to you? Yeah, so th think of it as taking these fractured experiences. Uh, you know, before coming to Element, I worked on the campus side in student affairs, uh, residence life, Greek life, enrollment management. And we're all sort of doing our own thing yikes. on campus. Yikes! And it is sort of a yikes moment, right? <laughs> Where yikes. everybody's kind of just doing their own Silos. thing out there. Silos abound, right? So what we see is how do we take all of the information we have, that great experience that we give students as we're trying to recruit them, and then not dump them into these silos, right? So we can now take all of the things we've learned and built for the recruitment journey and leverage that for the current students. We basically now have to re-enroll um, or re-recruit every semester these students to come back. So how do we do that? by meeting them where they are and engaging with them in the same way we would engage any prospect that we want to come back and, and join us. So really interesting that you say that. We have to re basically re-enroll every student every semester. Now, if you're a college or university administrator, you're working in college or university, which many of us are, that, that hurts a little bit. What do you mean? My students are loyal. They're not going anywhere. What do you mean I have to re-enroll them? Outrageous. <laughs> what does well, that mean? Well. 
think about it this way, right? <clears throat> Our students are living lives outside of campus every day. And we need to make sure that we're setting them up for success and meeting them where they are. So one of the things we're doing on, on the product side is really leaning into our artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, ChatGPT has exploded, uh, right? Six months ago, nine months ago, nobody even knew what ChatGPT was. Hey kids, <laughs> it's the internet. And now we're here and everybody's you know, using AI in some way. Even people who don't use AI know what chat GPT. Right. I talked to a person yesterday. He's a, that chat GPT thing. And I said, G GPT, that means it's becoming a brand. And it's interesting that it's becoming a verb too. I have people, you, you've heard people say, you know, I, I, uh, I chat GPT and it's got a thing at the end of it in ED. So it's like this action that you take now. Right. That's when you know it's really growing in popularity. Right. And, you know, 20 years ago, we were just starting to Google things, right? I, I Googled Google. that. Um, and this is going to be the same sort of revolution uh, here, not only in higher education, but really in the world. So Element has been right on the forefront building these AI powered tools. And we've really leaned into that in our roadmap this year. So <clears throat> we're building chatbots. Um, one of the things we can do with our chatbot to re-engage those students, right, is when a student has a problem, when do they have a problem? Sometimes it's not between 8.30 and 4.30, right? Mostly it, not. It, it's at 11 o'clock when they open that, that email and they go, oh, I need to meet with my advisor. Oh yeah, I'll do. I'll I'll call tomorrow. Yep. Well, the call never comes, right? Well, what if they can get on with their virtual assistant? Say, hey, bot, I need to schedule an appointment with my advisor. Sure. Live in the now. Sure. Let yeah. me let me do that for you. And in one platform, Element Four Fifty One, that bot can fetch those appointment schedules. Say, let's set you up book that appointment. And then as an administrator, I can come in and see the whole picture of that student from the time, first time they met us all the way till now. As the VP of product, do you get more um, requests for services or are you doing more convinced, you know, cause higher ed, let me, let me re step back. Higher ed is a, a little crusty, right? We're a little crusty. It's 200, you know, God knows how old higher ed is, learning, teaching, budgets, uh, uh, sales cycles. It's all slow. It's all built to be mm -hmm. kind of slow. When you're a technology company and you're serving students, it's aimed at moving fast. And we uh, in higher ed, we have ways that we do things that we like and we have old systems and we have system conversions and there's all sorts of problems around these things. Um, so are you spending more time as the VP of product going, you know what, uh, somebody asked me if, it, if, a, if a bot could schedule an appointment, I'm going to work on that, or I need to make this clear in a way that, that, you know, the administrator who's one year away from retiring with all the budget to make this decision understands about this product. So it needs to be UX, more UX than, you know, bells and whistles. How do you balance that? Yeah, I, I think we spend a lot of time with our partners and our clients are some of the most visionary people uh, because we we are, as things go, relatively new to the scene, right? We're, we're maturing every day, um, but there are ed tech companies out there who have been around, you know, 20, 30 years. Uh, everybody, everybody knows who they are. Right. So when when we talk to our partners, we want to hear their problems and then we offer the, we offer solutions. And for, for me in, in establishing our product, it's really, what are the problems we're trying to solve? We at element don't try to feature hunt, right? Nailed we're it. like, Oh, this, this let's other product, this right? Let's, yeah. let's build this widget. Uh, we build solutions to problems. So, uh, if, Scheduling that appointment with the bot solves a pain point or reduces friction for students and the staff that they work with. That's the solution we're going to build. But we're not just going to build it to say we built it, right? 
that that widget mentality isn't how we operate at Element. How do you how do you prioritize what you're going to build and in, in, in not right? Because some users may want this, some may want that. You've got to put it in product cycles. You've got to you've got to prioritize what's going to hit. Do you do you do you push it out for user input and say, hey, we're thinking about this and who wants it? How do you decide? Because that's if you don't evolve the product, then the user doesn't evolve within the product, right? right? And then they go, oh, this is not serving my needs. Let me go somewhere else. So it's always this communication cycle. It's not just about the technology. It's about communicating what's and how's and when's. How do you prioritize around how you evolve it? Yeah. Well, one of the, one of the really unique aspects of Element is we have actual live chat agents all that right well that was impressive you need help you hit the little help icon in element and you're chatting with a real live person and many a real of live our, person a real live person amazing <laughs> who knew um and our support team also helps bring in those feature requests and helps helps us organize them right so right. we can we can hear what the community is really craving and really going for. And then of course, one of the other things that we do as technologists is keeping our finger on the pulse of what's going on outside of higher education as well, right? That's interesting. Tell me why. Yeah. Tell, tell me about that a little bit. Well, th- think about it, right? The, the By the way, co- let me get everybody's attention. A- a- attention. This is important. The college administrator who's you know one year away from retirement, right? probably did not wake up one morning in January going, hey, I need an AI powered something to do this job, right? Right. Um, So we're the ones with an ear to both sides. Um, What's happening in higher education, but also what's the newest technology that we can pin on these solutions? So you go to banking or you go to insurance companies or, or, you know, whatever, and say, oh, uh, look what these guys are doing over here. Yeah, what's this really interesting thing that people are doing in uh, customer support or in sales or what have you? Because all of those things potentially translate over to student success, to admissions and recruitment. So it's a really powerful way to kind of look at other things. So uh, as far as prioritization goes, you know, we we really look at what are our clients saying? But again, what is what are those solutions that that we're looking for? Um, so we can really be cutting edge on on our product. This is all about students, right? You're going to get your your you're making it easier for the colleges and universities to communicate with and recruit students, and therefore the the pathways that a rep or whoever is using element 451 uses to communicate have to be easy and they have to be robust you have to have text you have to have calls you have to have email and you have to build in all of those things in in such a way that it makes sense knowing that each university contacts their students on different cadences Mm -hmm. they have different email campaigns they have different messaging they have different texts they have different needs how do you make it customizable right because every there's a big thing around customization no matter how many companies you talk with as, as somebody who gets um who i have to do this every two years and i go in front of vendors and i say we're shopping you you know and that, this is just what it is every two years and everybody says it's customizable you can do you can customize it and then sometimes when you get in there you can't customize it can you talk about customization and and is there is there you know some fixed parts of it and some variable parts and the reasons for you know, maybe limited customization versus open customization. Well, one of the things we want to do is, <clears throat> of course, we want people to be able to customize it. But when you deliver a blank slate, sometimes you get choice paralysis, right? Ooh, and then, and choice then, paralysis. And then they do nothing. <laughs> right? Where you have this situation of like, okay, yeah, I could build any kind of campaign workflow that I wanted, right? But what do I want? Yeah. <laughs> right. What's the best practice? How do you even know what you want? Right. So yeah. where where do we start? So one of the things we'll be showing off later at the conference is um, a new feature called Copilot within within Element. Engage. And, en- en- engage. And Copilot is our internal chatbot for 
uh, an for, AI, is for it an AI copilot? So, yeah, so it's an AI copilot. So that's awesome. One of the things you can do is bring up copilot and say, copilot, I need a three week campaign in SMS and text messages to promote my upcoming open house. And the audience is, you know, prospective students. And within minutes, the customization will be done for you. That's amazing. It will look into some of the information that you've already provided um, your knowledge base and you know your school colors and all this stuff that we already have in Element for other configurations. And it will generate an outline. It'll say, hey, here's the outline for that. Do you like that? Love it. Really? It. I love that because then you're talking about efficiency. Now, if I can re if I can make my my communications team, my enrollment teams more efficient, that's going to exactly. give them more time to spend actually telling students about my college or university, right? Exactly. And you know, when when I was on the campus side working in enrollment marketing, we would have these brainstorming sessions, and in, in an afternoon, there'd be seven of us in a room. Uh, a lot of salary sitting in that room mm. going, oh, you know, we need some great subject lines for this email. And we would spend all afternoon, walk out with three subject lines, and maybe one of them was really good, right? That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Now we can take Copilot and say, you know, hey, here's an existing email that maybe I've already built an element, right? Yep. But can you improve this writing for me? Can you give me great subject lines based on this and in seconds generate maybe even give me an a b test you could set up an a b test in, in element to do that so these are the things that we're really looking at making our teams more efficient and you know we've said for a long time hey we want your team of five to feel like a team of 10 and now we're kind of saying hey with copilot and some of these other AI assistive tools that we're bringing to the market, that team of five can feel like a team of 50. Yeah. And what we want you to do is actually spend the time as a guy who grew up in student affairs, we want you spending time with students and helping students succeed, not necessarily writing ad copy or yes. setting up the workflows, right? Like I love a good workflow, but if I could not spend an hour doing that, how great is that? Amazing. One, I, I love the, the bit about A-B testing because I think that's where a lot of us fail in higher education. And, and to remember, n not every message hits with every person. You have to test your messaging. You have to, you split test, you A-B test, you, you A-B-C test and A-B-Z test, and you keep doing it. But a lot of times we don't have the time. We don't have the tracking tools. We don't have a way to make it easy. If you're telling me I can split test my messages within Element 451 and do in a way that it's efficient and doesn't take time away from my team, whoa, this is next level. Right. And, and, the, and the same thing goes for personalization, right? We've, from the very early days of Element, had a really powerful tool where you could build variations of a single email. So you come in, here's a content block, and I can swap out that content block based on somebody's major or that they've shared with us. Great in theory, yeah. right? Really powerful tool. But hey, if I have 50 majors, what do I have to do? Somebody's got to write content for yeah. those 50 blocks. Yep. So that was a really powerful feature, but it was underutilized because nobody had time to write 50 different yeah. blocks of content, right? Right, so then you pick your top four or five and that's what you... Right, yeah. top four or five and other, right? Exactly, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. And, omnibus. Right, so now with these generative AI tools, you can really quickly generate all 50 of those. And, you know, is it going to be perfect every time? No, any more than you or I writing copy would be perfect yeah, exactly. every time. But if I can get a really good starting point and then I can get those you know one or two copy editors that I have on my team that don't have time to write from a blank screen but do they have time to copy edit 50 mm -hmm. of these I bet you they do so this is the way we're using AI to scale our teams up so we can focus on the true work at hand and not get bogged down in the details well, we're here at the Engage. Summit here, Element 451. We're talking 
uh, with the VP of product. Uh, he is a man on a mission, Eric Range. What do you hope to take away from your conversations with your user group over the next two days? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like, you know, we're an all remote company. There's nothing like coming together with our, our users. And I mentioned the Engage conference a year ago. We had a little over 100 people. Uh, we were at a, a hotel across across town here in Raleigh. Um, we are now well over 200 people. Excellent. Here. And we're already saying we love this location, the Market Hall. It's amazing. Um, but we already know that next year we're going to be too big for market hall. So Engage. we're already thinking like, oh, my God, how do we how do we handle this? But these 200 plus, most of them are element users yep. are here. And just to be able to sit down and have, uh, you know, a conversation with them. What's their biggest struggle? What's their what's the biggest challenge they see? Um, you know, I've already had a conversation earlier today um, about directed missions, mm -hmm. right? That was something that 15, even 10 years ago, yep. if you said, hey, I'm going to take kind of what more or less is, you know, the search name data that we would all have used yep. 10 years ago, and I'm going to offer somebody admission, I have VPs of enrollment who like that would have like their head would have exploded. You say right? 10 years ago, but you could say five, <laughs> five days years, ago, yeah. somebody is <laughs> going, what's direct admission? I, I mean, it is not as cut. That, those are the types of innovations we need to see from our partners. Um, what I can tell you about Element 451 and what you guys have done here, you're, you're bringing new perspective to an industry that needs to evolve uh, and, and into more customer centric. It needs to be more personalized for students and for the consumer, AKA yeah. the consumer. Yeah. And that's what you're doing here at Element uh, 451. And there's one man that uh, that evolves the product, if you will, on a daily basis. Daily, daily. We we iterate. We iterate very very fast. I mean, we have. I was talking about Copilot before. Um, some of the things that we're going to be showcasing in Copilot were f literally not possible two and a half weeks ago. That's amazing. Um, and as the AI technology broader evolves, we're able to latch onto that very, very quickly. We have some of the brightest, smartest engineers working on the entire product stack, um, but specifically on our AI, uh, our AI features, and they, they are on top of it. They see a new feature coming in kind of the AI tools that we're using, and they're incorporating it almost immediately it's, it's amazing well ladies and gentlemen here he is he is eric range and he is the vp of product at element 451 how'd you feel about your uh, first foray here on the Edup experience podcast eric this is great uh you know it's actually my first foray on a podcast so hey, there you go and, there you and, go and you're already <laughs> a pro ladies and gentlemen you've just ed upped <laughs>